We got a question from uh, Farron. Farron says, I have a decent home gym set up with rack, rack, plate, dumbbells, etc. However, I want to take a break from that and go out on a cut for about 10 months at a 50, 500, pardon me, 500 calorie deficit and just maintain the mass I have and lose fat. I have kettlebells, the duffel style, handbags, push-up stands, stuff like that. Any recommendation of a routine I could do three to four times a week utilizing that stuff? Well, 500 calorie deficit. The first thing I would do, uh, Farron, if I'm you, uh, I would take a week aside and get that minus 500 in every seven days in a row. If it's six days in a row, don't start until you get seven. If it's five days in a row, don't start until you get seven. If it's less than five days, you're not serious, so why are we wasting our time? And uh, the best thing you can do for this uh, 10 months um, is it, maintaining that caloric deficit is, I mean, by itself is a great base to start this program. Um, where the 500 calories will come from, now that's the next step up. So, gentle listener, let's follow what he said. He's going to drop out 500 calories. All right, that's a good plan for anybody. But I'm arguing this. Until he can do it for a week or two, worrying about exactly what macronutrients and all that stuff is a waste of his time. So, one week, two weeks, experiment with that minus 500 deficit. Um, one thing you'll find uh, during this time, uh, the more you sleep, the easier it is to deal with hunger. And also, too, that sleep and food have this, you know, revolving relationship. Uh, as you lean out, most people tend to sleep better. As you sleep better, you're not so triggered by hunger. Uh, if you're not so triggered by hunger, you eat less and you lose weight, which seems to help your sleep. And this thing just keeps spinning wonderfully in your direction. Uh, after that, uh, you know, here's here's an idea for it. It's just just a thought. Uh, kettlebells, the sandbags, and the push-up stands. Uh, I mean, I would let me just give you a workout. I want you to do at least twice a week. Uh, put the kettlebells in the put the kettlebells over here, maybe twenty meters, thirty meters, and then put the push-up stands over here. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to do either swings or goblet squats at the start with those kettlebells. If it's swings, 10, 15. If it's goblet squats, five to 10. Then pick up the duffel bag and walk it over the push to the push up thing. Pop on the ground, give me three, five, 10 push ups, whatever is easy at first. Jump up, grab the duffel bag, go back. Swing or goblet squat, duffel bag, push up. Duffel bag, swings, goblet squat. Uh, and I, well, here's a great idea already is that one day do the swings, one day do the goblet squats. And just go back and forth. Uh, I would start off with maybe um, uh, the, the round, uh, so down and back. So with this is a round, the swings, the duffel bag, the push up, the duffel bag, that's a round. Swings, duffel bag, push ups duffel bag. That's two rounds. I would say in the beginning, try five rounds. First time, five. See how you feel. Uh, I'd love to see you build up to 20 rounds of that. Now that's, um, I would suggest only doing that one time and making that like your challenge. So the challenge of this whole program is that you can do this one time, 20 times. So there's two, two workouts in a week for you. The other, the other workout, if you're just doing one, well, I'd love to see you do the armor building complex, and that's the the root of how I now train uh, bodybuilding hypertrophy for uh, with kettlebells. That's that's become like my go to, my standard. Okay, um, it, yes, it's a complex, but people seem to have this ability to just keep going and going on it, and that's that's money when it comes to hypertrophy work. If you can't do the armor building complex, uh, please, uh, if you can't, that's fine. Then maybe do something like just a lot of presses on that third day, uh, uh, vertical overhead presses. So presses, alternate press, one arm press, two hand press, whatever you decide. 
If you do decide to do a fourth day a week, um, I would love to see you take this I mean, this idea on the road. A fun thing might be, um, <laughs> of course, I love this kind of thing. So, so it's it's a thing I, I do with certain military groups. Uh, you get a backpack, you drop your kettlebell in there. With you, you could also drop those push-up stands and you go for a hike and, I don't know, set a timer every five minutes. You stop, you take the backpack off, you do 15 swings, 10 push-ups, put it back on, keep hiking. Try to hike for six rounds of that. I mean, try to find a loop or something like that. And I think you would... Uh, and so remember, remember, gentle listener, that when it comes to exercise for fat loss, uh, you really have to find exercises that you're not very good at it. I, the way word, the two words I put back to back are inefficient exercise. So, you know, if you're a former collegiate swimmer um, and you were at the nationals and all that, and you quit and put on 50 pounds of body fat, jumping back in the pool isn't going to help you because now you're more buoyant. And with your background, you're too good at swimming. Uh, the example I always use is I have that I have a cruiser I ride and I ride it far, but my cruiser, if I'm going up a hill, I have to go because eh, it only has one speed and it's got coaster brakes. For me to go up a hill, it's huh, huh, huh. and I'm talking about a very small hill. In my neighborhood, we have a hill that's probably like this, and I have to get up and crank. If the hill goes like this, I live in Utah, it's straight up. I have to get out the bike and push it because my bike weighs about 90 pounds. If I have a billion dollar racing bike and a streamlined help, a helmet and all the other gear, I can go a hundred miles and not even break a sweat. I, I imagine I'm just making that up. So make sure your exercises for body fat loss remain inefficient. The kettlebell swing is a great exercise. I said years ago, it's a fat building, a fat burning exercise. Uh, one more. I said years ago that the kettlebell swing is a fat-burning athlete builder, and uh, I still stand by that. The swing is an amazing exercise. The reason I like the push-up for fat loss is that you have to get down on the ground. You have to get back on the ground, get back up, on the ground, get back up, which is a great value. Um, for, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of burpees, but I like, you know, I like mixing standing to push-ups. I, I like it. Um, I just hate it when I see people just take that beautiful movement uh, and then turn it into those horrid atrocities I see online all the time. Um, so those would be my ideas. So prove to me you can cut out the 500 calories by doing it two weeks in a row. Then figure out a really appropriate way to cut out those 500 calories. Um, it's real easy to, if you just get rid of it. If you're an American, just stop eating crappy carbs. I mean, it's that easy. Uh, I read a thing, and I, I hope it's wrong, but they said that the average American consumes on Super Bowl Sunday 8,000 calories. I mean, if you're eating 8,000 calories a day, you know, I don't know how you're gonna, I don't know how you outwork that. I don't know how you do it. Um, and then after that, make sure you lock in, maybe try, try that idea, that medley, the goblet squat and, um, push up with a duffel bag. Try that the first week twice and then gently add the other stuff on. This is a good question. I hear it a lot. Um, of course, if you do easy strength for fat loss, it's available. DanJohnUniversity.com slash bookstore. Uh, I got a lot more ideas for you and I think you're in the right wheelhouse for what I would suggest. All right. Thank you.